Just until Daddy and I can earn enough money to send for you. I'm sorry you lost your job, Daddy. Oh, don't worry about it, Daisy. I'll find another one soon, and then we'll all be together again. We're just lucky that Aunt Marilyn and Uncle Kenny said that you can come stay with them for a while. I know. It's just that I don't feel so lucky right now. But I'm sure I'm gonna start feeling lucky any second. Oh, you're a good girl, Daisy. We'll miss you. I'll miss you too. You'll be good now, Adam. Understand? Yes, sir. And look after your sister, okay? I will. You know we love you, don't you, Erica? Of course, Mama. It's just that we're gonna miss everyone so much. We'll miss you too, honey. Take care, we'll be together again soon. Well, I, I guess this is it then. Yes, I suppose it is. Are you sure you'll be all right, Mikey? Of course I will, Mom. I'm 16 years old for crying out loud. You take care of this guy, okay? I love you, son. I'm, I'm sorry this had to happen. Oh, you just caught a bad break, Dad. I'll be back just as soon as you're back on your feet. You're gonna be fine. Honest. And don't call me Mikey! Taxi should be here any minute. Just think, your first taxi ride and your first airplane ride, both on the same day. You're going to have a fine time. Yeah, sure. Come on, sweetie. We've talked about this. 
There's nothing else we can do. I know, but I don't have to like it. You're going to love it at Aunt Judith's. In California, it's sunny all the time. Yeah, it'll be great. Come on, Haley. Breaking up the family like this is hard for all of us. Try to be brave, okay? For me? I'll try. That's my girl. You're a brave little girl, Haley. Very proud of you. I'm proud of you too, Daddy. Be a good girl for Aunt Judith now, okay? Don't worry, I will. Are you gonna be okay, honey? I think so, Mama. You call me when you get to Aunt Judith's, okay? I will. Be good! See you soon! Yeah, but how soon? Take those from you, dearie. You mean-spirited, nasty mutt. I ought to... Where is my darling, precious little angel? That ridiculous lady's auxiliary luncheon went on for hours, and all I could think about was my sweet, lovely, beautiful little girl. Who, me? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, my cuddly, wuddly, whittle mommy to be no bless a Are you getting your work done here? Yes, ma'am. And you've straightened up the sitting room as I instructed? Yes, ma'am. Maddie helped me. I've told you, Madeline, not to do the child's work for her, haven't I? Yes, Miss Judith, but... There are no buts, Madeline. If I must feed and clothe the little wretch, then she is going to pull her weight around here. But she's just a child, Miss Judith. She needed some help. Your house is so big and oh, she's such a tiny little thing. I don't care. It will do her good to put a little muscle into her work. Now, there is no more helping her with her chores. Do we understand each other? Yes, ma'am. Do we all understand each other? Yes, ma'am, we do. Really? Trying to talk to those pretentious ladies auxiliary people into making me their president is the most tiresome thing I've ever been forced to do. Next to taking in thankless relatives who are too lazy to do as they've been asked. I will be resting in my room. See that it stays quiet around here. Yes, yes ma'am. And you, clean noblesse's basket and fluff her pillows. My precious little poochie must be made as comfortable as possible before she delivers her litter. All right, Aunt Judith, I will. Of course you will. I told you to do it. And for heaven's sake, clean up this mess. Why doesn't Aunt Judith like me, Maddie? Oh, don't take it personally, my little leprechaun. That old sourpuss doesn't like anyone, except that pampered pooch of hers. And why don't you like me, Noblesse? I like you. <laughs> the doggy doesn't stray far from the mistress, that's why. I feed you, I give you your baths, I take you on walks, I sneak you little treats. I wish you would like me. There, isn't it better when we get along? What are you doing to Contessa Noblesse, you ungrateful little brat? Nothing, I promise, I was just... You were just torturing her, that's all. Imagine taking out your resentment toward me on a poor defenseless dog. But I wasn't... Don't take your personal misfortune out on my pet, you horrible little creature. It's a lucky thing for you that your father is my brother, because if we weren't family, you'd be on the streets. Now go to your room, you ingrate. Well, maybe I wish I did live on the streets. It might be better than living here with you and your stuck-up mean old dog. I said go to your room and don't come out until I tell you to. <laughs> Let's go 
on down in the basement. Oh, the furnace must be acting up again. <coughs> now, what, you little troublemaker? <gasps> Saints preserve us. I do believe it's puppy time. <coughs> Miss Judith, Miss Judith, come quickly. It's time. The Countessa is having a royal pops. <laughs> This isn't the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. That's an interesting hat you have there, young pup. Maybe you call that a bow roller or maybe a helmet. Well, though I can't for the life of me figure out why, you seem to have selected strange predicaments as your category. Would you like to continue as is or would you like to disengage? Well, this shouldn't be too difficult. After all, just this morning, I sprang a trap and rescued a mouse in my bathroom. Now, how I got my bathroom, I'll never know. <laughs> Cut it out, you! I'm making my cigar all wet, slobbery, and disgusting. And I'm the only one who's supposed to be doing that. Hey, I'll bet you're hungry, aren't you, boy? Bet you'd like a nice, juicy steak, wouldn't you? Or maybe you'd like a big bowl of warm milk? Well, who wouldn't? You know, my canine comrade, the folks in the penthouse have a full lard. There, upstairs. Plenty of food, plenty of milk, plenty of vittle to fill up your middle. Attaboy, sick him. And if you eat too much, you're gonna be plenty sick. Well, I didn't say it'd be easy, did I? And even if I did, are you really gonna believe a rodent who smokes a cigar? Go for it, Fido. Or maybe I should say, go find it, Fordo. In any case, this is me saying, hello, I must be going. Oh, make it stop hurting her, Madeline. Make it stop hurting. Now, Miss Judith, you know as well as I do what an actress noblesse is. She's doing just fine. Won't be long now, Miss Judith. Oh, I'd say you'll be the proud grandmother of a fine litter of pups any time now. Oh, I don't think I shall make it. I feel faint. Now, I can't be nursing the both of you, Miss. Why don't you just sit down and put your head between your legs? What a ridiculous suggestion. I'll do no such thing. Suit yourself. Out of my way now. Here comes the first one. I don't care how much trouble I get into. I've got to get down there. There you are, you sweet little one. You lie here next to your sister. There's more coming to join you. <gasps> I could use some more clean water, if you please, miss. Here comes another one. <laughs> Aren't they sweet, miss? <laughs> gotcha! That 
Thanks, my little leprechaun. Well, I think that's a lot of them. Good girl, Noblesse. You've delivered five beautiful babies. mess cleaned up. <laughs> How are they doing, love? Oh, uh, just fine, Maddie. Do you think I ought to do something about Aunt Judith? Nah. nah. Best be commencing to spruce up Her Majesty the Queen Mother there. Your aunt has requested the honor of Noblesse's presence, and she hasn't been brushed in nigh a week now. Maddie? Yes, love. How come Aunt Judith hasn't come into the kitchen since the puppies were born? She hasn't even seen Noblesse since the birth. <laughs> well, Haley, my girl, passing out colder than a herring on Friday ain't the most dignified behaviour, if you receive my meaning. I think she was needing these past few days to think up an excuse for acting so unladylike. I'm betting on the delicate blood explanation. We'll just have to wait and see. Do you think she'll let us keep Curly? Curly? Is that what you've named our little intruder? Yes, because of the curl and his funny little tail. Do you like it? I like his tail, I like his name, and I like him. Me too. Do you think Aunt Judith will notice that he's not no blesses? There. Now she'll never be able to tell the difference. You? It's visiting hours at the maternity ward. Oh, feeling a mite better today, are we, miss? Hish tosh. A few days in bed and I'm as good as new. I don't know what could have possibly caused that violent allergic reaction. I have such delicate blood, you know. And how is my darling doggy doing? Recuperating nicely, I see. Oh, I'm sorry I haven't come to see you sooner, noblesse, but I've been under the weather. Here you are, Contessa Noblesse. Just a little something for the new mummy. Now, let's take a look at your precious new family. I've already thought up names for all of them. This is Princess Penelope. Oh, isn't that adorable? And here we have Count Kierkegaard. Next is the Duchess of Dunellen. And this would be Sir Winston. I love that name. And I dub thee Lord Llewellyn. <laughs> and this precious package of canine adorability, I name... <gasps> what is that? Well, miss, I suppose you might call him a strange visitor from another planet. <gasps> An interloper? Well, more like a guest, miss. A homeless orphan who had the good fortune to stumble upon the Contessa here, and seeing that she had all that milk, I didn't see no harm in it. <gasps> but what if, what if Noblesse's children catch something from him? We don't know where he comes from, where he's been. Now, miss, I don't believe that husky is something anyone can be catching. A husky? Yes, Curly's a husky. At least he looks like he is. I might have known you were somehow involved in this, but a husky mixing in with my prize pedigreed Afghan hounds? Are you out of your mind? Out! I want him out! Now see here, Miss Judith Ardmore. That husky has as much right to know bless his milk as her own brood. She's got it and he needs it. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all there is to it. 
You can order me around. And you can even dictate the what's what to this bright little niece of yours. But that dog is just a baby. And you'll not be casting out a nurse and pop into the cold, cruel world until he's strong enough to make it on his own. Oh, very well, Madeline. Curly may stay. As long as Contessa Noblesse graciously agrees to provide him with sustenance. But the moment he is weaned, he is weaned from this house as well. Am I making myself clear? Yes, ma'am. You surely are. Good. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! You'll not be tanking me in six weeks' time when that litter of critters is weaned. Six weeks? Aye. That's about how long we'll be having to figure out how to keep Curly. But I guess I told her royal pain in the you-know-what anyhow, didn't I? I guess you did. a very impressive entrance. Although, frankly, I think you made a bigger impression on the floor than you did on me. Say, is that a hungry look in your eye, or are you just glad to see me? Someone else is new. Every time I see you, you're hungry. That's a mighty fine canine wine. Brings new meaning to the phrase, wine and dine. It's a joke, kid. Come on, let's get you some dinner. We are. It isn't much what I call it home. I could call it Brenda, but that would be silly. This place is a rat's nest. Here we are. Ah, Jarlsberg. A whiff of the Yelps. Or in your case, better make that a whiff of the Yelps. Well, 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 what do you know? That's quite a balancing act you've got going there, kiddo. Let's see if you can hold one more. Well, I'll be a blue-nosed gopher. Actually, I'm a black-nosed pack rat. I'm saying I like the act, kid. You have a certain raw talent. And that's the best kind, because after all, what good is cook talent? <laughs> However, your finish could use a little work. Nothing we can't fix, though. Come on, doggy. Let's have a ball. What a delightful idea, Judith, to have tea on your porch. The veranda, dear. Yes, well, since you are considering me for membership and, dare I say, office, I thought we should do something a little special today. <laughs> Well, as you know, Judith, becoming a member of the Ladies' Auxiliary is a time-consuming process. Don't I know it. We must be careful to admit only the most compassionate and tolerant ladies. Of course. Oh, by the way, have you met my niece, Haley? I have been caring for her for the past year or so, while my poor, unfortunate brother recovers from a streak of bad luck. She is an absolute delight. We get along famously. Why, you'd think she were my own daughter. We're so close. Good afternoon, ladies. May I freshen your tea for you? Just lovely. How charitable of you to take her in, Judith. Charitable? Nonsense. She is family. Any one of you would do the same. Is our little surprise ready, Haley, darling? Yes, Auntie Dearest. Wonderful. Come to me, my child. Make sure it goes exactly as planned. On with the show. Oh, I wonder what Judith has planned. Isn't she beautiful? No wonder she's won so many trophies, Judith. She's perfection itself. Oh, 
positively exquisite. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Clever indeed. He's a stray that Haley brought home, though he usually doesn't associate much with my blue bloods. is as kind and charitable as you are, Judith. You must be so proud. Yes, well, I am, of course, I suppose. Don't mind if I do. How clever. Oh, very impressive. What a smart doggy. <laughs> Good dog, Curly. Well, I for one am quite impressed. Yes, indeed. Anyone with the big heart and patience to take in a stray dog and teach him to do that is just the sort of person we need in the ladies' auxiliary. Really? Absolutely. This dog is positively marvelous. Maybe you can have him perform at our charity luncheon next month when we swear you into office. You mean? That's right, Judith. You're exactly the sort of caring, patient, and charitable woman we need to have on our board. Your dogs are all quite clever, Judith, but this one is a real prize. Oh, goodbye, dear. Thank you for the dog. See you soon. Stand, Judith? Under the circumstances, I don't see that I have much choice. But if you ever betray me like that again, all three of you will be out on your pointy little ears, ladies auxiliary or no ladies auxiliary.
Right, love. You can open your papers now. Happy 8th birthday, Haley. Oh, thank you, Curly. Thank you, Maddie. I wish... I wish I could see my family again. <gasps> Curly and I have a present for you, my little leprechaun. A present? Really? What is it? Skateboard? Oh, Maddie, thank you. I love it. <laughs> all right, all right. You're welcome already. All right, you two. Out of my kitchen with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Your father called. You and your little mixed-breed mutt are going home. Contain yourself, young lady. Honestly, you'd think that during your years with me, you'd have picked up some semblance of decorum. I'm just happy to be going home. That's all, Aunt Judith. Well, that makes two of us. It is positively freezing here. Randolph, turn up the heat. <sighs> this is a miserable place indeed. Well, why did you come with us then? You could have just put me on a plane. I've explained it to you several times. Washington State is the only state in the Union in which Contessa Noblesse has not won a competition. So, I am combining the business of returning you to your parents with the pleasure of taking the gold in the Washington State Dog Competition. Once we win first place in this cold, forsaken outpost, we will have blue ribbons from every one of the United States. There is no other champion that can make that claim. We're here! How good to see you. We really appreciate all you've done for her. Thank you for driving her all the way from California. I brought her back in person for one reason and one reason alone, so that Contessa Noblesse can claim the winner's circle in tomorrow's Washington State Dog Competition. <laughs> Contessa Noblesse? She's gonna enter the dog competition? <laughs> kids, kids, have some manners. I mean, if Aunt Judith wants to enter her prize Afghan in tomorrow's dog competition. 
Michael, why are you all laughing? <laughs> I'm sorry, Judith. It's just, it's just that, well, obviously you don't know. Know what? <laughs> the, the Washington Dog State Competition is a dog sled race. <laughs> <laughs> Judith, please don't go through with this. Yeah, come on, Judith. Noblesse isn't cut out for dog sled racing. Noblesse is cut out for anything I say she is. She is a champion. She's a champion show dog, not a sled dog. Michael, Hillary, it is a matter of pride. As Ardmores, I should think you would know that. Oatmeal, noblesse. Oatmeal. Uh, that would be mush, Judith, not oatmeal. I knew that. Mush, noblesse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope we win, Mama. I hope you do too, sweetheart. But remember, win or lose, we're the real winners now that we have you back home again. Thanks, Mom. But don't be surprised if we take this race. We've been practicing. Practicing dog sledding? In California? Here, for luck. Okay, boy, now don't get nervous. It's just like the skateboard, only colder. Do 
Curly, we've got to help them! Curly, help me! Help us! There's a good doggy! I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but thank you, Curly. You're truly man's, or in this case, a woman's best friend. Aunt Judith? Oh, what the heck? I'm going to really miss you, you troublemaker. You'll come and visit your foolish old Aunt Judith, won't you? Of course I will. Here, Wolf and I want you to have this. You're the real winners here today. Besides, you and Curly had us beat anyhow. How about you, Contessa Noblesa? Wanna be friends now? What's Curly doing? I guess he figures that if she wants the trophy so badly, she can have it. behind us and made the present count even when it's cloudy and skies are looking gray just believe in love and love will find the way love will find a way to heal a hurt and heart together when we've been apart. 